I made my own UI library to go alongside Shad CN UI. But first, let me explain why. So about a month ago, Adobe released React Area Components. If you don't know what this is, it's a headless UI library essentially where you bring your own styles to it. But the benefits of using one of these is that they do all of the accessibility for you and they handle that JavaScript for you as well for showing the dialogues and different things like that. But the important one is that accessibility. We can all build a button, but sort of that extra 20% difficulty to make it accessible for other users is really important. And it's a thing that not many developers can pour their time into. So this is why you use a library such as React Area Components or Radix UI. So let's take a look here. As you can see, it's world-class accessible components with custom styles. And as we scroll down, they have everything from the search field to the table, to popovers, tooltips, everything you would expect and everything that you may have seen before if you've used something like Shad CN UI, which is built on top of Radix, as I said earlier, which is a very similar thing Again, all of these are unstyled. They've just applied styles here to obviously show you them. And this is what Shad CN is using. But Adobe have released React Area Components. They previously had React Area, which is a load of hooks that they use. And what they've essentially done here is now build out the components for them just to make it easier for us because the hooks were a bit more advanced technique for people to build their own components. You can see here, you can bring your own CSS. You can use vanilla CSS, Tailwind, Style Components, Panda, you name it, however you want to style it, you can use it. And it's got advanced features if you want to get into drag and drops and handle that all in an accessible way, which is something that's really difficult to implement correctly. They have high quality interactions. It's built to be used on mobile. It's built to be keyboard friendly, so you can go on your lists and use your keyboard, which again is really important for accessibility. But even beyond that, it's just really nice user experience to be able to use your keyboard on certain sites for certain functionality. As I said, it's all about that accessibility. Now, one of the things that React Area Components say set them apart from Radix UI is their support for mobile. Apparently, the Area Practice Guide essentially only focuses on screen readers for the desktop, and you miss out on that mobile if you're just following that. So React Area have gone in and made sure that everything is mobile ready for mobile screen readers, which is really important because obviously a lot of the web now is on mobile. So. Let's jump into looking at some of the components. Now, I highly recommend checking out a video by Josh Tried Coding, who literally just uploaded that today as well, where he dives into this and talks a bit more because I'm gonna move on to my UI library in a bit. But just to show you quickly the components, if we go into something a bit complex or of, let's say a calendar, you can see that you essentially get the individual parts of it. So we don't have the buttons here that say slot. This is how you would end up using it. You would import the button, the calendar, calendar cell, calendar grid, and heading. So it's sort of broken down into lots of individual components that you can then put together to make a calendar picker like this. And again, obviously this has CSS because they've styled it to make sure we can see. But that's essentially how you use it. And as I said, if you're familiar with Shad CN, you'll be familiar with this style of component library. But let's jump into Shad CN. As I said, this one here is built on Radix. Now, I really wanted to use React Area components because I'm a big fan of React Area. So what I went and did is I made Jolly UI. Now you'll notice here, it looks exactly like Shad CN UI and that's on purpose because essentially what I wanted to do is make sure I could use my Shad CN UI config and my Tailwind config and all of the colors that I've set up for that, but use it with React Area components. So everything you see on here is built with React Area components instead and all of the theme and everything, all of the config files are the same from Shad CN. So you start from installing this. Now, a benefit of this is I can use some other Shad CN components such as Sonar, which isn't actually built with Radix and you couldn't build this in React Area components at the moment. So I can use this and not worry about the styling looking different and having to do different things in my Tailwind config. So it allows me to use a few more of these components like so. So let's jump into it, as I said, We've got that installation, as I say here, you go in head and you install Shad CN UI, and then you do a bit of stuff if you want to use links and different things with React Area components. But again, this is literally very similar to Shad CN UI, and as I said, that's done on purpose. You can go in, you can copy and paste your code. So we go to the checkbox, you can copy and paste all of the code that you need for it. And it's just essentially Shad CN components taken away the styling from them or taken away that core component of Radix and made them compatible with React Area Components. And a really cool thing on these docs as well is I've added a system that was um, Park UI have a very similar one. I highly recommend checking them out if you want a different type of component library. But you can come in and you can even customize your theme here a little bit to match what um, the documents will change with it. So the documentation here is changing when I'm changing all of this and sorry if I just blinded you there. But that's really cool. As I said, I'm essentially building this as my own sort of internal library that I want to use on some of my projects, just so I can go in, copy and paste things and make it really quick. 
If you're not using Shatsian UI, I highly recommend you check out Draft UI. Very, very similar concept to Shatsian UI and obviously my Jolly UI that I've built up there. And again, it's it's very similar. It's built on top of React area components, but it doesn't have that sort of CSS that you need to set up um, with the styling. So this uses Tailwind colors under the hood. So you'd have to come in here and change the code a little bit more if you wanted to match it to your own styles. But again, it's a really good starting point. I've even helped out on here in adding the command line interface here with Sly. Um, I did that PR and it's really cool. And me and the developer of this have actually spoken and we're just trying to help each other out where we can because we really like React Area Components and what it's doing for the web developer world of making us make it really easy for sites to be accessible. Now, if you really don't like the copy and paste style of UI, I highly recommend you check out Next UI. Very similar styles to Shadzian UI. And this is actually built on top of React Area, which I previously mentioned of using those hooks instead, but they've gone in and build the components themselves. And you don't actually um, install React Area, you install Next UI. So this isn't copy and paste, this is a traditional component library style. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say. As I said, check out that video by Josh Tried Coding if you want a bit more detail on React Area components. Check out Shad UI if you want to sort of learn about the new trend of copy and paste components. And check out my library, Jolly UI, if you want to get started with the React Area components. And maybe you've already used Shad UI, so you just want to try them out in a way that's just going to work straight away with your application already. And lastly, as I said, check out Draft UI if you're new to all of this and just want to get started with a library that isn't Shad UI and doesn't have those styles with you. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.